Alice, it could take corners better than the Jag. It won more races than the Union and it made Ford obsolete overnight. It's our number one ultimate racer. It's the Porsche 917. Mind-blowing piece of machinery. It looks mind-blowing. It is mind-blowing. The most dangerous, exhilarating car they had ever driven. <laughs> Just look at it. Just listen to it. How could the number one ultimate racer be anything other than the Porsche 917? It is the fastest car to win Le Mans. In its final incarnation, its 1,100 brake horsepower engine made it the most powerful road racing car ever made. Like the Auto Union 30 odd years earlier, the 917 worked on the simplest premise. Build the biggest engine that the racing bodies would allow, place it in the lightest body they could put together, put a driver in front, light the fuse, and hope for the best. When this car came along, it just eclipsed everything else that was out there. Uh, this four and a half litre, flat 12 air-cooled engine producing 580 horsepower in a car weighing 800 kilograms. These were figures which people just hadn't seen before. Porsche achieved these mind-boggling figures by sticking two six-cylinder 2.2-litre engines from the Porsche 911 together. That's right, two 911 engines rammed together. Now, rumour has it that this Frankenstein monster of an engine was air-cooled because Volkswagen had funded two-thirds of the racing project on the sole basis that the engine would use the same cooling system as their own products. In an attempt to keep the weight low, the 917 had a balsa wood gear knob. Anyway, the Leviathan engine was then terrifyingly placed in a wafer-thin fiberglass plastic shell. Look, even the dashboard's made of it. Which brought the final weight to 850 kilograms. Now, that's either insane or genius, depending on whether you're a driver or an engineer which is why all of the Porsche racing team drivers were too scared to take the car out on the track. It was clear from the start that this car had a level of performance that was quite beyond anything else that was out there. It was equally clear to anyone who was unfortunate enough to have to try and race one that it was one of the most dangerous racing cars that had ever been produced. There are drivers who will tell you that going down the Mulsanne Strait at Le Mans in a straight line with the car doing 230 miles an hour, that's knocking on 400 kilometers per hour. You could look in the mirror and you could see the horizon behind you move as the back of the car came off the ground. At first, everyone thought the problem was the suspension. Then some bright spark realized the reason the 917's back end kept leaving the track was that the tail was too long. So we picked up a saw, chopped a few inches off the rear, and hey, voila, a racing legend was born. Porsche returned to Le Mans in 1970 and did nothing less than annihilate the field. But their glory year was the legendary Le Mans of 71. This year, Ferrari had built a series of cars as a direct response to the 917s. And once again, Porsche simply destroyed the competition, as well as setting the world record for the fastest time and the most distance covered at the legendary course. It was faster than a Formula One car on certain tracks which for a sports car was simply ridiculous. Um, it is just the most amazing car. And more than 30 years on, the record still stands. And it will probably never be beaten, because after the 71 win, the racing board banned the five-litre class at Le Mans. It was, if you like, the best of the best, and I don't think we have seen its like ever since. The 917, feared by the opposition, loved by the crowd. The last and the greatest of the giant road racers, and our number one ultimate racer.